I'm really invested in this. I didn't want to be, but here I am. Hi, welcome back to Katie Can't Read. I'm Katie, I can read, and I know this is a weird angle, and it's because I'm holding my phone between my knees. I wish I had, like, a second camera to show you exactly how I'm sitting right now, because it's ridiculous. Um, any ways, today we are beginning a new reading vlog. I've been a little slumped this week, so I figured maybe doing a series reading vlog would help me get out of it. Um, and also I was planning for this to be uploaded next week anyway, so, um, you know. Um, in this little vlog, we will be reading the All for the Game trilogy, also known as The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovic. Do I know what these are about? Absolutely not. Did I download these because there are memes that I need to understand? Absolutely. Um, what else about this? I don't really know what this is about. I don't know anything. All I really know is that people who love this book love this trilogy. Like, they love this series. This series is something that people love, and they're also, like, acknowledging that, like, it's not great. So I'm going into this with the knowledge that it's not going to be, like, groundbreaking writing, but um, it's a lot of people's, like, favorite series. So that's pressure. Frankly, I'm a little scared, you know? I'm just, I'm a little, I'm a little scared because I don't want to hate it, but I also am scared I'm gonna love it, love it. Um, it's part of the ancient Holy Trinity, apparently, of Six of Crows, Raven Cycle, and the Foxhole Court. So, like, I already am obsessed with two-thirds of that. Shall I round out the Trinity? Yes. Let's see how this goes. I'm... I'm nervous. Alright. Here we go go. Okay, I finished the first chapter. I know who our cast is. We've got Neil, who um, I'm either going to like or hate. The current moment, I'm neutral. We've got like some coaches, a Kevin and Andrew. Um, I recognize these names from like the memes, but I didn't know their personalities. So now I'm starting to get to know them and I don't know how I'm neutral. Chapter one, we've done it. Then we're going into chapter two after I plug my phone in and leave it in the bathroom for the night. Yeah. Okay. Talk to you later. I do need to tell you about the dream I had last night after reading 30 pages of The Foxhole Court. Okay, so I had this dream last night that I was auditioning for a Foxhole Court musical. Why would I be auditioning for a Foxhole Court musical? I am 40 pages into this book and I have not met a single girl yet. I digress. What was I singing at this audition? A song from the Raven Cycle musical. I think I've unlocked something. I think it's time that we just start adapting every book into a musical. Why are we asking for TV show and movie adaptations when we should be asking for Broadway musical adaptations? Imagine a Six of Crows musical. Imagine a Red, White, and Royal Blue musical. Imagine a Raven Cycle musical. Like, it would go so hard. I think I unlocked something. I think I'm the future of book to stage adaptations or book to anything adaptations. I am the future. When this, when book to stage adaptations are big, you'll be like, oh, remember when Katie from Katie Can't Read said it in her All for the Game vlog? Yeah. Yeah. I saw it in a dream and it was divine intervention. You're welcome. I have my night cereal and my Kindle, and I'm going to read chapter three of the Foxhole Court. You know you're an adult when you can eat night cereal and feel happy about yourself. There's girls. Hi, okay, vlog, I'm here. I did only read like two chapters last night before I fell asleep, but I have big reading plans today. Today, I'm gonna go to Central Park because it's gonna be like kind of warm today and I am just going to lay there and read and maybe eat snacks. And I finally got a new tripod slash ring light situation. So we can use our real backdrop now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, okay, I'm really like into the foxhole court. I just hit like the 35% mark last night and I'm trying to like get really into it. I did not realize it was gonna be like the mafia, which is wild. Um, it's like the most wild thing ever. It's a fake sport, there's a mafia. All of these characters are like traumatized. I, here's the thing I'm wondering. How are they all like, I wanna know everything about all the characters. I wanna know all of their tragic backstories. Tell me everything. Tell me everything. Okay, that's my day today. There will be lots of like reading clips. I don't know if I'm gonna talk more. I don't know. We'll see, this has been a fun, a fun book so far and I'm only 30% in. So hopefully this whole trilogy goes well for me, you know? Hi friends, I finished the first book, The Foxhole Court, and let's discuss, let's talk about it. Um, I read like all of it um, in the park today. It was nice and relaxing, except for the fact that there were children everywhere and I was like, they were screaming all around me. I was like, I'm not here for this. I'm not here for this. Um, anyway, yeah, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know if I liked the first book or felt neutral about it. There were a lot of things I did like and that like intrigue me that I'm going to keep going with this series, but I'm not sure if it's a three and a half or four star book for me. Um, I think I'm gonna give the first book three and a half stars. So put that in the record. First book is a three and a half star book. And it's, I just, I feel like moderately neutral about this first book. I don't feel attached to any of the characters at this point in time, um, but I am intrigued by the story. I'm intrigued by the characters. I wanna learn more about all of their dynamics. I think that it's a really interesting set of characters and I think they all have, I don't know, just like different reasons for, um, liking or not liking each other. And I think that's really interesting. I think it's really interesting. I see why people like it. It's not as like, when I was, before I started this, I, people were always like, it's so cringy. It's like fan -y. And I was like, I don't think so. I do think it's wild, but no more than like reality TV is. Like it feels, it feels insane. Let's get something straight. It's not a normal story. Um, the characters are totally unrealistic people, but like, who cares? I don't need realistic people to be happy. I don't know. I'm really interested to like continue this trilogy, see what I think. The ratings for this trilogy are insanely high on Goodreads, so I think it might look up in the next two books for me. Maybe I'll actually care in the next two books. I don't know. I really liked it. The first book was just slow too. Like it took a really long time for anything to start happening. And I get it was like laying a lot of groundwork and world building stuff. World building as in like what all these characters are going through. But I don't know. I just, I liked it. I didn't love it. Do you know what I mean? Like it was good. It was a fun time. Um, I was intrigued by the story. I was intrigued by the characters, but at this moment, it's not like a favorite series for me. Solidly neutral on that first book, but it was fun. I had a fun time. And like the last 50 pages really picked up for me from like the game the first game of the season to the end, I was like, here for this. I was like, hello, hello. I'm here for this drama, kind of living for it. That interview scene, wow, drama. And I don't know how I feel about Neil yet as a main character. Part of me wants to beat him up just because he deserves it. And the other part of me, is just neutral on him. I don't know. I don't have a lot of strong feelings right now. Um, if I had to pick a favorite character, it's uh, probably 
probably like Renee or one of the girls that does nothing wrong. Um, yeah, I was, I was, um, I did like, what was his name? Nikki for a really long time. And then like the middle section happened and I literally said to myself, I'm like, I don't know if I like this book. There was that whole party scene, the first party scene. And I was like, this is really happening. They're really drugging him. I was not here for it. I was so not here for that. Um, not here for it. So he has, they have a strike in my book. All three of them, the cousins or whatever, strike in my book. What's up with them? Do I get to find out what's up with them? I need to know what's up with them. Like, what's the drama? What caused all this? Like, I know a little bit, but I need to know. I need to know. Okay. <sighs> I've been talking about this for five minutes and I've said pretty much nothing. But yeah, three and a half stars. I'm going to keep going. I have no strong feelings. Um, I don't understand what XC is as a sport. Let's be real. Don't know what's going on. But I'm enjoying it. I like the mafia aspect of it. I don't really like the sports aspect. I like the mafia aspect. And I like this like budding found family thing I'm gonna get. Is this gonna be a found family book? Is that what's gonna happen here? I certainly hope so. Okay, I made it 60 pages into The Raven King, which is the second book of the All for the Game trilogy, not to be confused with the Raven King, the fourth book in the Raven Cycle. Anyway, it ended on a soft sort of found family-ish moment and like, I get it now. Like, I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> I'm going to sleep. Good night, friends. I made myself some hot chalky and I'm sitting here under my Lightning McQueen blanket and we are going to read the rest of the Raven King by Nora Sackabick. There's gay! Ah! Like, I knew this was coming because I've seen the memes, but like, there's gay. Yeah, Neil, you read Andrew. You read his trauma. You read his past. You go. You go, boy. That got really intense really fast and do I care about Andrew now? I went like a whole book and a half being like, I don't really like him. I don't get the hype. I'm, he annoys me and now I'm like in pain for him. Also, Neil just straight up killed a man and like, I'm here for it. Never mind. Neil didn't kill him. Aaron did. Sorry. But there was a murder. They're doing my favorite found family thing. They're doing my favorite found family thing. So my favorite found family thing is when the found family acknowledges that they are a found family. Um, they're doing it. They're so doing it. And yeah, so I love that found family thing when they're all like, we love each other. And even if they don't say we love each other, if they just go, family is who you choose and they're all at Thanksgiving together like that. That's found family stuff right there. That is what I like to see in my found family book. I only have 14% left. And I don't know what's going to happen in this last 14%. And these books so far, I have just learned, do not expect anything. It'll just happen. Um, there's not really plot, just vibes. And then all of a sudden something really major happens and you're just like, a worm. Anyway, I'm ready for this, like whatever major plot twist is gonna happen or plot development, I guess, is gonna happen in the last 14%. A little stressed out, not gonna lie. What's gonna happen? I don't know. I hope that the guy from the Ravens isn't gonna come kill someone again. I don't know if I can handle it. I'm starting to get attached. Don't think I can handle it, but I don't know. I literally don't know what's gonna happen. Is Andrew gonna get out of rehab?
Is that what's going to happen? Is that, is that going to be the end of this book or the beginning of the next book? I don't know. I don't know. It is way past my bedtime and I need to finish this. <laughs> the character development that just happened right now is living, is going to live rent free in my brain. Like, oh my god. The trust that Neil suddenly has, well, not suddenly, it's been happening for 400 pages, in his teammates to give them his safe? You're joking. The trust. Wow. Wow. To quote Owen Wilson, wow. <laughs> I need to go to sleep. I finished it. I finished it. I'm gonna give that one, I think four and a half stars. It was not good enough for me to make it like a five star read because like, maybe it was a five star read for me because I looked forward to reading it. It's somewhere between a four and a half and a five. Anyway, that ending was a lot. It, it it's a lot <laughs> I don't I was not expecting torture <laughs> in a sports book <laughs> like I I was not expecting full torture in a sports book um This series is weird. And it's weird too because I'm enjoying it. It's all the things that I usually wouldn't really like in a book. And yet I'm here being like, nope, I'm into it. I'm into it. I think it's just because found family trope will like overreach literally any, any other thing I don't like about a book. Like if I hate everything in a book, but there's a found family, I'm like, yeah, here we are. But the thing is, it's weird. I don't hate this. And there's not a single thing about this that I'm like, mm, I hate it. Like, okay, well, I do, I do hate some of the decisions the characters make, and I hate that they won't talk to each other, and I hate the circumstances they're living in. I would die. I would be dead by now in this, on the, on the foxes. Guys, the series is a lot for me. The series is a lot for me. Um, I'm gonna tell you one thing. Um, if you're like, wow, I wanna read this series, please, 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 please look up trigger warnings. Look them up right now. I will put I will put the link to the book trigger warnings in the description below. Um, because I can I think anything that is considered something you could be triggered for. And I'm someone who does have triggers and stuff. Um, anything that would be listed as something that's like a common trigger has happened in this <laughs> in this first two books. <laughs> like, I just yeah. If I was at a worse state of mind, I I'm very thankful that I'm reading these at this stage in my life where my mental health is good. Because if I had read these any, at, even like three months ago, it would not have gone well for me emotionally. It probably would have DNF'd the series. But also like, I'm low-key obsessed with the character development. We're back on to what I liked about it. I'm low-key obsessed with the character development. I'm living for everyone else in this story. Like, yeah, Neil is great. We get that. But I really like the other teammates i think they're all really cool and they all have really interesting like backstories and like yeah they all have trauma like every other book character but like their stories are all really interesting and unique and the dynamics between all of them are really interesting like why is so and so like the the thought process behind each character and how they're connected 
was really planned out and I think that's really cool like I really like when I can tell an author thought a lot about about the characters and the story and just everything about it like when a, when you can obviously tell a book was written from a place of love I I love it so much more um this book is intense I'm gonna read this next one like all day tomorrow like all day um I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> I hate that I'm enjoying this. I, okay, I finally, like, understand the hype of this trilogy. Like, the first book, I didn't get it. I was like, I don't really know why people hype this up. Like, maybe I could argue, like, I see it. But I'm finally getting it. Like, I'm finally getting it. And I'm kind of buying into it. But the thing is, I don't think this is going to be a book I recommend to people very often. Um, unless I know they can handle it. But I don't know a lot of people currently who I'm like you could handle this like I literally like on a bad week I couldn't handle this <laughs> when people say this is their comfort series I'm a little concerned I'm not gonna lie um but it's going well I'm gonna go to bed now because it is past my bedtime and then I'm going I don't even know and then I'm gonna wake up tomorrow I'm gonna do I'm gonna do some homework in the morning. I'm gonna go to my one class and then I'm gonna read all afternoon. I have plans on going back to the park. Um and then I'm gonna read all afternoon and then I'm gonna come back and do my last class. And then hopefully I will have finished it by tomorrow afternoon. So that I can get this vlog all the way um edited and exported and maybe uploaded. Maybe. Also, I've given up on doing B-roll. I don't want to find music. I don't want to deal with it anymore. So we're just going to do talking clips. Okay. And this is off for the night. I am going to put this away and I'm going to go to bed. I'll see you tomorrow morning. I'm about to start All the King's Men and I am low-key stressed. Just a little bit stressed for this one because it's one of those books where I know it's not going to have a happy ending. Like, you know when you go into these, like, books and you're like, this whole thing hasn't been happy. There's no way there's going to be a happy ending. That's how I'm feeling going into this. Um. <laughs> ah! I love the trope of like broken character gets a motherly hug for a first time like yes yes give me that touch starved motherly affection moment i deserve it all right so the reading plan for the rest of the day is i've packed a backpack full of snacks and my kindle and i'm gonna go to central park i'm gonna read for a while and then i'm gonna come back probably around dinner time um do some homework and hopefully i'll have made huge strides in this book so i can finish it Hopefully today. Hopefully I'll finish it in the park when I do a lot of uninterrupted reading. Anyway, apparently this bartender <laughs> knows that like Andrew's probably been in love with Neil for like ever. And I think Neil's gonna find out soon. And I'm ready for it because like I know and we know, but he doesn't know. <laughs> it was the next page. Um, I'm at chapter 8, 34% of the way into the book, and they need to kiss so bad. <laughs> it's taking so long, and they just need to do it. I do love that in this last chapter, chapter 7, um, there was a whole conversation about who would be essential in a zombie apocalypse. Like, that's the stuff I don't see enough in my YA books, and I think it's time to start seeing it. We need to have these conversations more. Now that's a first kiss. Okay, so um, Andrew and Neil have officially kissed, which is like, finally, you know? Like, finally. Um, I think I'm gonna read one more chapter and then walk home, because I still have stuff to do before my class tonight. Um, it's a beautiful day though. I started to get a little chilly, so I think that's why I should go home. But it's a beautiful day. Um, I'm 43% of the way into this. I've read like 30% since I've been out here. And yeah. 
Hi homies, I made myself a sadness lasagna in the microwave um, that I got for $4 at CVS and I'm going to eat it while reading All the King's Men. The countdown texts are starting to stress me out just a, just a lot. Um, <laughs> um, I also think that as much as I think that like Andrew and Neil are cute together, they should both really like go see a therapist before they consider being in any sort of relationship with anyone. Like those two have some things that need to get worked out before they can commit themselves to another person. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> okay. I ate my lasagna. I'm starting to get a little stressed out. Um, they're here. <sighs> uh, fine. This is really intense. <laughs> the mafia. I too, I really just want to run around at the big cleaver. You know, like I just, mm, beautiful. He's getting rescued. Oh my God, I'm so stressed out. Thank God. Okay. <sighs> Thank God. Someone is like, we're gonna rescue him. That means a lot to me. I'm really invested in this. I didn't wanna be, but here I am. Another of my favorite stupid tropes. The main character, or maybe the love interest, gets really hurt, and their love interest goes absolutely feral. And it's happening right now, and I'm living. The character development in one of them asking if he's okay, and he actually answers with something other than, I'm fine? I can't. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to bed, but before I do, I just want to say this because it's in my head. The thing that I'm appreciating about this trilogy is that, like, it's really, like, it's really wild and gory and dark and all these things, but at the heart of it, it's so full of love and connection and friendship and found family, and I think that is beautiful. Okay, so I read some this morning and I take it back. I take back what I was saying about Andrew and Neil. I mean, yes, they both need to go see therapists, but I do get it. I do ship them now because there's nothing like washing your lover's hair in the shower because they can't do it themselves. That just like really gets me, you know, like I was here for that. <laughs> anyway, I'll probably read during my acting class. I'll finish this book tonight. I have like 10, 20% left. Andrew really just chose Neil over Aaron. I'm, I'm fine. Kevin Day, I am so proud of you. Yes, King, yes. I finished it. <laughs> I have decided that the last book gets five stars and I'm gonna give the whole trilogy a series average of about four. Um, Guys, that last book was really good. Like, really good. Like, I was, like, all up in my feels in a way that I haven't been since I was, like, 13. Like, I don't know. There was something about that that was, like, wow. This was this was a good time. Um, All in all, I really would say I had a really good time with this series. Um, Like I said, I don't recommend this uh, to everyone. I think if you can handle the subject material, by all means, read it. But I, I, I don't think this is the book series for everyone. It is not the book series that for me six months ago. Um, if I was in a different headspace, this book series would not have gone as well. Um, I also think I liked this series so much because I went into it with the bar on the floor. Like, I stepped into this series with the bar flat on the floor because I'd heard so many bad things about it. Like... I had heard even the people that liked it were like ashamed of liking it. And like, I kind of get it, but like also like, like what you like, you know what I mean? Like who cares? Um, it, like in this, it's not like it's objectively problematic or anything where you should be ashamed that you like it. Um, there's no reason you should be ashamed of liking this. 
it absolutely does read like fan fiction. Um, that is like one common complaint I've seen about it a lot. But do I care? Absolutely not. How much fan fiction do I read? So much. Um, I don't know. I ended up really enjoying this trilogy. I loved the found family aspect. I loved how intense it was. And I loved how it balanced the lighthearted moments with like really dark, heavy moments. Like specifically in that last book, we go from Neil literally being tortured to him being welcomed back with warm arms to like a vacation. So <laughs> like they really balance, um, Miss Nora Sakovic really balances lighthearted moments of found family bonding and friendship with just truly like gritty dark moments and I think that's really cool because I feel like a lot of times books are either really dark or really light and never in between um and this book to me felt really in between um because there were so many happy moments uh, scattered through the series that I wouldn't say these are happy books by far, but it really balanced out the heavy stuff. Because if it was all just the heavy stuff, this book series would be unbearable. Like, I probably wouldn't have made it through them. Um, if there was no lighthearted moments, I would have DNF'd this series so fast. But there's so many lighthearted moments that keep this series afloat that I see the redeeming qualities of it. I love the cast of characters. I think they're really fun. Um, I think they're really unique. Um, and I actually really like the side characters a lot in this one too. Um, like I really liked the girls. Um, I thought they were really strong women. And in a book that is such a boys club, like it is, it's a male dominated book. But the girls were so strong and so different and so, progressive um we have a former stripper who's not ashamed of her past she loves it um we have a rich girl a disgraced rich girl and then a girl who's a former gang member and but the former gang member girl is the kindest on the team and always has a polite like a smile and a hug for everyone and i just there's something so cool about reading girls who are strong and independent and fierce but they're not rude or like they're normal people um I'm so sick of reading books where women are put to be a strong woman you have to be like physically imposing and mean to everyone like I'm just so sick of reading those books and so reading about these girls who were um kind and funny and there was a girly girl and a tomboy and um a girl who's in between like to read about them and they were all strong female characters was a, probably like one of the highlights of this for me. I also liked how different all of the characters felt. Like even all of the, even though like arguably Andrew and Aaron and Kevin have like sort of similar, I'm traumatized, don't talk to me, like personalities, all of their trauma is different and all of their trauma comes out differently and I think that's really cool because I feel like I read a lot of books and all these characters start to act the same. Um, but even though they were all angst, they were all different types of angst. And I thought that was really, really, really fun to read. But I also liked that in this team, there were really angsty characters and there were really lighthearted, really fun characters. Like we had Nikki to be a foil for Aaron and Andrew. And I just, and Matt to be the foil for it. And so like... I just thought that was really cool. And I also, before I finish this, I want to talk about the character development that Neil goes through specifically because I was obsessed with his character development. From where he starts to where he finishes, he becomes a whole different person. And I mean that in a good way. Not like in the way of like, he, they lost sight of the character. Like, he's the same character. A lot of his core all of his core is the same, but the way that he interprets things and sees his relationships and is willing and open to the future is really cool. Like I, I'm a slut for character development and Neil had some of my favorite character development I've read in a really long time. 
Um, I really just, I really appreciate just how his dynamics with all of the other characters have improved and all of it. I think he was a really well-developed, really cool character by the end of everything. I'm going to wrap this up. If you have read this series, because this vlog is like 40 minutes and I'm going to cut some stuff out. Um, but if you have read this series and you love it and you want to know more of my thoughts, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and talk to me about it. I... I could go on and on. I could just drone on and on and on. And I haven't even gotten into all of the specific characters and the relationships that come out of it. I have some feelings about Andrew and Neil that I'm like, uh, I don't like I get it. I ship it. I get it. But those two need to be in therapy every day for the rest of their lives. So that way they can be in a relationship with each other. Whatever. Anyway, if you have any things you want to ask about how I feel about this series or you just want to chat about it, comment below, reach out to me on Twitter. I am very chill. Um, I loved reading this. This was really fun. I found myself very excited to pick up these books, which I feel like I haven't felt for a book in like at least a month and a half where I was like genuinely sitting in class like, can I get out of class so I can read my book? Um, that hasn't happened to me in a really long time and that was really exciting. So that these books will always be special to me for that reason is that I really enjoyed picking them up. Will I reread them? I don't know. I don't know for sure. Um, who knows? But time will tell. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you watched all of this, I really deeply appreciate you and I'm sorry it was so long. Um, please make sure to like, subscribe, drop a comment. Um, and thank you for all of the love. I will see you in the next chapter. Bye.